we are saying that the area of the sphere is 4 pi r squared. So that's going to be important to us when we're solving uh, those types of uh, problems over there. Okay. All right, so that's one of the skills that we'll need for this problem. And then the other skill. Uh, has to do with the fact that this is a black body. Now, um, it, what we're going to be doing here is, remember we're focusing on the intensity, but what was this question asking us for? Well, what's the relationship between intensity and pressure for a black body? Um, I forget. Take a look at the information you were given in the problem and see if that helps you. What we need is an equation that's going to relate our intensity and our temperature. They told us that the intensity is equal to sigma times t to the fourth. Sigma times t to the fourth. Uh, this is called the Stefan Boltzmann law for a black body. So one thing to keep in mind, this is only for what are called black bodies. We only use this for black bodies. For black body radiation. It's the Stefan Boltzmann law, so sigma is the Stefan Boltzmann constant. Maybe they're using sigma because that's the Greek letter for S, or Stefan. Uh, so that would give us that, and they gave you the Stefan Boltzmann constant in the problem, although if you're missing that part, maybe I'll have to give that to you. It should be in your uh, back cover. So let's take a look if we can find that Stefan Boltzmann constant in the back cover, or maybe the front cover, wherever the constants are. Where's that? Uh, uh, yeah, 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8, and then a bunch of, bunch of uh, units. Okay, that looks good. All right, and something else they remind us of. Now, does this equation make sense? So if the light is more intense, when the light is very intense, does that gender, uh, is that coming from a high temperature or a low temperature? Now that's just kind of common sense here, right? High temperature would in generate more intense uh, energy. Um, the one thing that you couldn't predict, of course, is this fourth power over here. So that's what we have to look at. Then another important equation here is that we can also find what the maximum wavelength of the EM light is. Remember that all of these, uh, everything we're talking about now is for energy that's being radiated as electromagnetic radiation. We're focusing on energy radiated as electromagnetic radiation. Uh, so we could also try to find the maximum wavelength, the peak wavelength, the wavelength that's being emitted the most. And that was also given to you in this homework problem. So lambda sub m, the maximum wavelength times the temperature, equals 2.9 times 10 to the negative 3. And then the units on the right-hand side would be meters, kelvins. You can see these are the right units, because on the left-hand side, the units are meters for lambda and kelvins for t. All right, so this is something else that we might have to do. We might have to find uh, the maximum wavelength uh, that is being emitted. And again, this is for black bodies, not for just everything. 
but it tells us that, um, so the M here is for max, the maximum wavelength emitted. All right, so these two things are just for black bodies, and these are for everything, and putting these together, it will allow us to solve a lot of different types of problems. Okay, well, why don't we try working through the problem now, then? Let's start with a picture. What's a picture of this situation? Let's try to uh, elaborate our picture there first. What else do we have to draw in the picture? So you've included this distance of 5 times 10 to the 8, but is there any other information from the problem that we can put into the picture? The astronomer? Sure. Now, you wanted to put in that 2.5 times 10 to the 13 distance. So show me, what, what is that distance? That's the distance between where and where. 2.5 times 10 to the 13. What's that? That's the distance between what two points? Um, the surface is stronger. Oh, let's see. Maybe I didn't read carefully enough. So um. it is measured uh, at a distance of 2.5. OK, so actually. They're not quite clear about whether that should be measured with the surface or with the center. Uh -huh. But I guess it doesn't really make any difference because 10 to the 13 is already uh, 10,000 times bigger than this number. So actually, the size of the star is negligible. The size of the star is negligible compared. So this distance here is going to be negligible. It's going to be simplest, though, to suppose that it's measured from the center. It's simplest to suppose that it's measured from the center, uh, even though this distance here is negligible. So that gives us 2.5 times 10 to the 13. Now, it's always good to try to say what the question is and build that into your picture. So what's the question asking us for, and how does that connect to the picture? Temperature. The temperature where? Uh, the surface. That's right. So we want to know. Now that's the area where? Uh, yeah, OK, so that's good to build into the picture. So we know the area of this sphere is 3.14 times 10 to the 18 using our 4 pi r cubed, 4 pi r squared formula in this radius. So what did you do after you found the area? So we found the power. All right, and what numbers did you use there? Like 0.5 and 0.4. OK, let's try.
trying to build that 0.055 into your picture. Where does that 0.055 go in your picture? Right here. Radiation. Right where? Uh, from here. Yeah, which one? This place. Yeah, how do we know this should be the astronomer and not the star? Because it says so. Yeah, because it says so. Okay, this is the, the argument for making a nice clear picture and building all the information into the picture. So the intensity of the radiation, they didn't tell us the intensity of the radiation on this small circle. They told us the intensity of the radiation over here. So here's where we should build that into the picture. This intensity is 0 0.055 watts per square meter. So it's always a good idea to take our time and build all the information into the picture. 